In the opening monologue of the Bible's most cynical book, Solomon writes, What has been will be again, and what has been done will be done again. There is nothing new under the sun. Is there anything of which one can say, Look, this is something new. It's a withering take on the world, but I don't think I can argue with it. Even our trust in technology is as old as that time in Genesis when the people living on the plain of Shinar discovered a revolutionary new building material. They believed that it would empower them to change the world, and they called it brick. We shouldn't chuckle. In a hundred years, descendants of ours will laugh at our blockchain, AI, and all the other techie buzzwords that make us feel like we just added the 119th element to the periodic table. As you read through the Bible, here's something else that isn't new. Low-character people in high positions. The first person you're likely to think of, of course, is King David. He certainly had some character issues. But before David, there was Saul, Israel's first king. In the beginning, Saul seemed the ideal man for the job. He was so unassuming that they had to practically drag him to his own inauguration. But five chapters later... He built a monument for himself. The rest of Israel's history is heavily weighted with with low-character kings, which brings us to the current conversation about leadership and character. You remember Solomon's scorching observation, there's nothing new under the sun? Low-character leaders are not a recent innovation. People have been electing, appointing, submitting to, and suffering under sorry leaders since before Noah felt the first raindrop. Leadership required character back then, and leadership requires character now. It's true if you're talking about Britain's parliament or America's Congress or your local mayor. It's true if the president's last name is Biden or Trump or Kennedy. It's true if you're talking about the CEO of a social media giant or the chair of a nonprofit or the pastor of a church. You cannot lead without character. I know. I tried it once. It didn't work out well for anybody. The temptation for us, whether we lean red or blue, is, or somewhere in between, is to vote for or defend a low-character leader who promotes policies we believe in. Sure, they're a scoundrel, but they are for or against things I'm for or against. I know that governance requires compromise, but when we compromise on character, we lose more than policy positions could ever gain for us. As another famous leader once said, what good is it for someone to gain the whole world yet forfeit their soul? It's not a sermon. It's just a thought.